Good morning, everyone. Um, County Supervisor Bruce McPherson, Chair of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. I'm going to be calling to order the Thursday, August 6th meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, 2020 of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission meeting. Uh, clerk will please call the roll. Commissioner Rutkin. Here. Commissioner Gonzalez. Commissioner Bator. Here. Commissioner McPherson. Here. Commissioner Leopold. Here. Commission Alternate Mulhern. Here. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Here. Commissioner Caput. Here. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Present. Commissioner yeah. Ray Johnson. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Bertrand. Pending. And uh, Mr. Gubbins. Here. That's all. Um, Donna Lind is also here. Oh, thank you, Donald. Thank you. Uh, Lowell Hurst present. Lowell, are you there uh, for uh, Aurelio Gonzalez? No, I don't believe so. I don't think they have an alternate for the uh, Metro. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just here as the alternate uh, for the city. Trina is present. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, and I am an alternate for Metro. Very good. Donna Lane. So one of our members okay. is missing. I'm not sure who that is. It's um, so Commissioner Lynn is representing Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Okay. So we, we do have a quorum. Um, we will go to item number go to item number two for oral communications. Uh, is there anyone a member of the public that'd like to address the commission on any item that is not on the agenda? Uh, you have three minutes to state your case. Is there anybody that wants to uh, make a presentation? Yes. This is Terry. Pico. Okay. And then Karen Pico. Okay. Go ahead. Terry, I'm trying to get your item on the screen. Give me a minute. I'm having some. No, 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 no. This is not about the item. This is just okay. about me. Okay. I have not properly introduced myself in the past. And I just want to, I would like to explain my background is as a research and development scientist. Seems uh, that the, the board doesn't seem to take my input too seriously. And so I'd like to say that uh, my industrial research began at Bell Research Laboratories, or Bell Telephone Laboratories, I should say, of which the group that I worked with during that summer was developing material that shortly thereafter led to a Nobel Prize, so uh, the uh, quantum Hall effect, uh, Horst Stormer. And my point is, I have associated myself or have learned from groups that are uh, of high quality. Thereafter, I worked at IBM Research Lab of which I developed laser chemical vapor deposition of something where I was not expected to have any success on that as an intern. And yet I did stuff like that. I worked at uh, UC Berkeley and MIT of where I have developed uh, processes that were incorporated into the semiconductor industry from a university side. I worked at Texas Instruments, bringing that technology in and I developed laser drilling in which your cell phones and, and uh, digital cameras are able to work. Uh, otherwise, you would have had small, um, you know, excuse the telephone ring. I have no idea if you guys are calling. But the point is, from a strong research and development background, and when I find problems, that's what I bring up to light, and that's what I do. And that's the end of my input. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to uh, join us on oral communications for uh, discuss any item that's not on the agenda? Mr. People? 
Yeah, hi, this is Brian Peoples. As you pull up my chart, I just wanted to, um, Brian from Trail Now, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'm no carry and I'll tell you, he is one of the most technical people. I deal with a lot of technical experts uh, for the company I work for. And so I do want to recognize uh, carry as a subject matter expert, especially when we talk about um, the subjects that are addressed by this agency. Um, are you able to pull my slide up? I think it's, I think it's on. Is it showing? Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't, there, yeah. Uh, well, do you want me to share? Or are you going to be on? Yeah, okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, so I want to take a minute just to um, express our concerns with RTC's train and trail plan. Um, currently, um, the RTC is doing a mass transit study for a million dollars for a commuter train that would travel through the Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor at 45 miles an hour. The 45 mile an hour speed is needed in order to justify the, bomb, the, the duration of the train traveling from Watsonville to Santa Cruz. Um, the federal guidelines requires that trails be 25 feet separation from the train. Um, this is actually becoming more stringent because there has been so many deaths of people in, in at the smart train. There's, I think, over maybe 12 deaths since it began. So that's like six a year. Um, so it's very dangerous for a speeding train to travel through our narrow corridor where it's 27 feet wide near 4th, 41st Avenue. Now the concern we have is that um, because is that you're currently doing a trail plan um, and spending millions of dollars for that design and build at a separation of eight and a half feet. Um, so essentially you're building a trail for a tourist train, a train that moves not faster than five miles an hour. Um, so we're asking you to, to be more truthful, I guess, um, on your approach um, for how you're spending our money, um, our tax dollars. We're a big supporter of Measure B. Um, so please uh, think about what you're doing in the sense of you're building it, you're designing a trail and building it at eight and a half feet, but federal guidelines requires 25 feet for a commuter trip. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to join us to uh, discuss something that's not on the agenda or would not be here at the time uh, to discuss an issue that is on the agenda? Uh, anybody else that would like to address us? I don't see any more hands up. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any additions or deletions to the minutes? I think we have one on uh, team one or something. Is that correct? There's a, um, a couple handouts um, for items six and 22, and there's a replacement page for item 13. Okay. They're the only changes I have, uh, Chairman. Okay. All right, um, those are noted. We will move on to the uh, consent agenda. These are items uh, numbers uh, four through uh, 20. Um, we will vote on those all in one unless there is a member of the uh, commission that would like to pull one of those. Uh, is there anybody that would like to pull one of the consent items from the agenda? Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Bertrand. I have a comment. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Bertrand. Um, I just have a question about item number seven. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my question is, um, I'm glad this report was brought forth to the board so that it could be um, disclosed to the public. But my question is, was this particular report reviewed by our legal staff? Uh, I'll answer that question, uh, Commissioner Bertrand. Yes, it was reviewed by our legal staff. Thank you very much. Okay, any other, any other uh, commissioner that would have a, would want to pull an item from the consent agenda? No, I just have a comment on, on an item. I just want to appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to appreciate the work of the staff on a number of uh, these that uh, be moving forward on projects uh, that we promised in Measure D. Um, the, the Highway 1 work, the storm damage work, 
um, and, uh, and, and uh, looking at the uh, revised bike Santa Cruz County work, uh, which has been really helpful in, in my district. Uh, I just appreciate all the staff work that went into that. Thank you. And I, I moved the consent agenda if we were, if we were ready for that. This is, this is Kerry Pico. I may have misunderstood that item uh, seven was something to be spoken about separately. I do have a presentation on that. Um, is now the right time or the wrong time? Well, it's the right time, but is there a commissioner that would like to pull it from the agenda? I'll pull it for a three minute comment from Mr. P uh, from the gentleman. Okay. We will pull that, um, just have a three minute comment. We'll get to it. Um, Okay, so since we'll address it, we'll, we'll go have it be 18A separate. Uh, that'll, we'll just get to it right away. Uh, that's okay. item, number, item number seven will become uh, 18A. Well, I'll second you. the motion. Okay, seconded by uh, Bertrand to do that. Thank you, my misunderstanding. No, you're right, that's fine. Anyone else would like to comment about or something from the consent agenda? Okay, uh, I'd entertain a motion by Mr. Leopold has made a motion to approve. We'll take I had my hand up. Sammy, Sally Arnold had her hand up. Oh, excuse me, okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Sally Arnold with uh, Friends of the Rail and Trail. Um, thanks, I know that it's really confusing when we aren't all in the same room and we can't see each other. So we're all just kind of doing the best we can to figure out what's happening here. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to speak um, on the items um, 9 through 11 or about uh, repairing the storm damage. Um, and I just want to say that we are so pleased to see that there's plans in place to repair that storm damage to the branch line. And we're really hopeful that by having a repair crew on call, um, we can catch any future storm damage early and get it fixed before it becomes a really big washout. And why I just know that this has been a long time coming and we really appreciate the staff work uh, to, to get that done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Arnold. Um, we also have Barry Scott. Go ahead. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. You're muted probably, Barry. Yeah, I, uh, I'm unmuting. Um, Am I, am I on? We hear, we hear you. Thanks so much. I'm so sorry. I jumped on kind of late. Uh, uh, Barry Scott, I live in Aptos. I'm with Coastal Rail Santa Cruz and also work with Fort. Uh, I, like Sally, I want to thank um, thank the commission for all of the work being done on the, uh, on the, on the rail corridor for drainage, repairs to the rail line. This is such a, an important investment. I know that it was a real challenge since over, over the two years since the storm uh, damage occurred. Uh, and it's just so gratifying to see the tremendous work that's being done and, and to know that the RTC is committed to getting that work done and to take taking care of uh, this important uh, asset that the county owns. Um, the other thing I'm just super happy to see is, is in regards to the um, Highway 1 corridor projects, specifically around Aptos, where we see the bus on shoulder project combined with uh, uh, construction planning and construction for two new rail bridges that would uh, include uh, our, our segment 12 uh, bike and pedestrian uh, infrastructure all in one package. Uh, and, and it's really amazing and impressive to see the way that the RTC has been working with Caltrans and County Public Works to combine, uh, what, three different types of, of transportation modes uh, at, a, at a place that is such a transportation knot, what Jarrett Walker referred to as the, the Aptos Strangler. So I'm just uh, very grateful and I just wanted to express my thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that, uh, from the public that would like to comment on the uh, consent agenda? I do not see any other hands, but could you please clarify what um, item number number seven will be? Number seven will be 18A. We'll get to it right after the consent agenda. Okay, 18 is still on the consent agenda. So do you want to put it on the regular agenda, which would be 21A? No, I wanted to make it 18A because, I, oh, well, maybe... Uh, 
Yeah, I just I think it's it's okay to make it 18A. It's a separate item that we're going to discuss. Uh, I don't know. Take her advice, Bruce. Whatever huh? she's to do. <laughs> I, just make it 18A, please, uh, on the agenda so we can get right at it and then get to the regular agenda. I think that's that's the best way to go. We'll make it a number seven will be a separate item 18A for Mr. Pico to make a comment, a three minute comment. Okay, we have a motion by um, uh, um, Commissioner Leopold. With, there was a second by Bertrand, second Bertrand, uh, to uh, adopt all the, uh, the consent agenda. Putting number seven is item 18A separately. All those in I don't think we have to call the roll on this. All of those in favor? We do. It's required yeah, you, by the law. Mr. Chair, you do actually have to call the roll. We do have to, okay. Yeah. This was the last meeting I was chairing yesterday. We didn't. Okay. All right, call the roll, please. Commissioner Rotkin? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commissioner Alternate uh, Mulhern? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Bertrand? Aye. That passes unanimously. Okay, that passes unanimously. Just now we're moving right along uh, to item 18A, which was item number seven on the uh, consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Pico, you had a comment that you would like to make? Mr. Pico, if you would please speak. Uh, we want to move right along, please. Yes, to be unmuted. Be unmuted, Mr. Pico. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I thought I was put off for a little bit, so I went downstairs. I apologize. Could you bring up my presentation, Yasunya? Yeah, I'm trying to hear navigate on my screens. Give me just a second here. We have, we have th up to three minutes for this. Absolutely. It's four slides. Um, I'm you go to the first one. No, that's the wrong one. You're supposed to go to the um, the one I sent you that was the replacement one. Um, I didn't get that. I sent it to you yesterday. Um, I can speak through this, but can you look on your your computer to to see that I sent you yesterday morning? Uh, it's the same title, but it says replacement at the end. Okay. While, while we're waiting for her presentation, I will speak through it, which is rather than talk about the limitations on the on uh, on what I talked about, who owns which which properties and all this, I'm going to try and educate the RTC on what is in the, in the titles themselves, meaning in the deeds that were there. In particular, the um the let me, let me pull up mine give me one second because i wasn't prepared for for this snafu um that um here we go so what defines a railroad easement in a deed and in a court ruling california these are all california rulings the general rule is that construing contracts and deeds for railroad rights of way, such deeds are construed as giving a mere right of way. Although the terms of the deeds would be otherwise apt to convey a fee. So it starts out that when you see a deed for a railroad right of way, that tends to be an easement and not a fee title. So there are situations that determine a parcel to be only a railroad easement. There are three situations. One is eminent, if eminent domain was used for railroad, meaning there, this comes from a great Northern versus the United States court hearing. If the term right of way is used to describe it, and that's in California civil code section 801, and if there's an implied use 
in the deed for a railroad. And that can be done, it's seen by the city of Los Angeles versus Pacific Electric Railway. That's where I'm getting that. And I would also like to point out that the term easement was rarely used in prior to the 1900s because right of way had a different meaning and was meant as an easement at the time. The next thing is, so I, what I have are snippets from different deeds that were presented um, th that come from the 1870 deeds. And I have the question on my slide saying, do either of these three conditions fit here? And here's deed number one, and I'm going, it's not the whole thing. It says have granted to the said Santa Cruz Railroad Company for a quote, right of way for its railroad. The land said conveyed, hereby conveyed, being necessarily required by the said Santa Cruz Railroad Company for the construction, operation, and maintenance of its railroad. That's deed number one. Deed number two. Dot, 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 the, land, the said land here conveyed being necessarily required by the said Santa Cruz Railroad for the construction company operation and maintenance of its railroad. By the way, I'm quoting from Klaus Spreckels and James Leonard, Thomas Allen. I've seen them all, all the way from the beginning of Watsonville up to, um, to Santa Cruz. And they all tend to include these terms. A third one has, the said Santa Cruz company, its successors dot, 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 are being, uh, um, have and hold the said premises while the same are being used for the conducting and maintaining of a railroad. And while such use shall cease, the said premises shall be reconveyed to me, my heirs or assignees. That's in the deed. That means that if it doesn't have a railroad running, it reverses to that. And that also means that that's an easement, okay? Number four, and that said premises, dot, 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 and, and that said premises are hereby taken and acquired for and condemned and appropriated to said plaintiff use for railroad purchases. That, you start to conclude your comments, please. I'm sorry? Uh, so, to conclude your comments as quickly as my, you can. My, is, my, my last comment is, here's from Rodeo Gulch, which is land that is conveyed, shall cease be used, uh, shall return to me. So my point is, the deeds that are in there are easements and uh, are not clear title as what everybody is saying, what I've been hearing from the responses from the RTC. It is not that clear. And I suggest you look at the original deeds and go through them. And, and I will honestly tell you that it's not a slam dunk on what is an easement or a, or a fee title, but there's enough uncertainty here where I don't trust the uh, title company. And as I said in my earlier statement, my research, I do not do things, I do things carefully. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Okay, yes. I'm not going to pull this item for any further discussion. I'm going to move approval of it. I want to tell um, the, uh, gentleman who, the gentleman who called in that if he wasn't able to get all of his points out, he could certainly send us uh, an email and we'd uh, sure. be happy to look at any other comments he'd like to make to us about this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I uh, need a motion, a second to. I, I just uh, moved it, Bruce. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there a second? I seconded it. Second by Schifrin. Uh, please call the roll to approve item 18A. Commissioner Rockin? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Sorry about that. Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. And Commissioner Bertrand? Aye. That passes unanimously. Approved unanimously. Item um, 18A. We go to uh, item number 19 to accept letters from the uh, RTC committees and staff to other agencies. Uh, they're listed. Do is it necessary for me to mention each one of them? 
No, the consent agenda was already approved, so we're okay. moving to the regular agenda. Okay. All right. Um, we will go to item, uh, see, the regular agenda, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the commission reports. Do we have any uh, committee reports uh, or reports from commissioners? Do any commissioners have any reports? Item number 21. Do we have any uh, new information on how Aurelio is doing? I I don't, yes. I, Ms. Kaufman Gomez? Uh, yes, he's. Uh, it's a, been a very slow, arduous recovery process for him. He's home with his wife. Um, it, it'll take him some time. It's really impact him um, on his on his health situation. So we wish the best for him to heal quickly. Thanks for that. Thank you for that question. Uh, commissioner reports. Any other reports from commissioners? We will move to item number uh, twenty. Um, 22, the director's report, an oral report. <clears throat> Good morning, Chair McPherson, commissioners, and <laughs> members of the public. Uh, I didn't plan to um, cover anything on COVID-19, everybody's favorite topic. Um, we've uh, gone over it extensively in the past, but I did want to mention a couple um, uh, quick things. Uh, first, uh, our staff is still uh, primarily working remotely. Um, essential staff is still coming into the office and our intention is to continue that until uh, the, the situation um, warrants making a change, which we don't see at this time. We're going to continue with uh, remote meetings um, as long as the Brown Act allows for it and, and uh, health conditions um, remain the same. Um, I have a, an update on the emergency bridge repair project. Um, uh, thanks to all the public for, for the comments and all the work we're doing on the rail line and also those that came from the commissioners. It's been quite an effort to try to get this work completed. Um, the structural bridge work um, on the emergency project that we, uh, we started this year um, has been completed and that bridge can now carry construction equipment and materials to the 2017 storm damage sites one and two, which are under construction and on schedule to be completed this construction season. Um, bridge was classified as an emergency and accordingly I've been approving um, emergency contracts, um, including one with rail surveyors and engineers to perform construction management on the job. Um, as we're doing this, project uh, time and materials. Um, we are watching it closely and trying to make sure we get the most for our money. Um, we were not able to do a full survey before we hired a construction contractor. And as we completed the bridge and looked at the drainage, we decided that we wanted to do a survey. And so I've amended the contract with rail surveyors and engineers to do a survey so we can um, Put in some pretty good uh, drainage to get us through the next couple winters. Um, the overall final, you know, drainage in the area is dependent on on a uh, improvements on a much bigger uh, situation out there, and that's the slide itself, which which uh, you know caused a lot of the runoff um, that resulted in the slip out just before this bridge and the bridge damage itself. Um, so we're, we're working real hard on that. And we're also um, working on um, the site one and two improvements. And if you had ever walked the rail line um, beyond this bridge repair and over to storm damage sites, uh, 20, the 2017 storm damage sites one and two, it was pretty much forested over. Um, and um, all of that clearing is, has now taken place and you can actually see a rail line out there. It's pretty impressive to see the amount of work that we got done in a very short period of time. Um, I also have um, an update on the uh, governor's executive order on climate change. Um, as most of you are probably aware, um, last year in September of 2019, Governor Newsom issued executive order N 1919. It was aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the state. Specifically related to transportation, the executive order directed the California State Transportation Agency, which is also known as CALSTA, to leverage the more than $5 billion in annual transportation spending for construction, operations, and maintenance to help reverse the trend 
of increased fuel consumption and reduce greenhouse gas emissions associated with the transportation sector. And I um, I've provided a copy of the full executive order to my um, director's report. So trans transportation pretty much is 60% of greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a reason why um, transportation always comes up in discussions about uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So in response to the executive order, CalSTA convened a state agency working group to develop a draft action plan. And that action plan outlines 10 strategies and actions for state agencies that have a role in planning, funding, and delivering transportation projects. Um, the, the working group uh, produced a, a draft of these uh, 10 strategies and it, it provides opportunities to advance several of the RTC's priorities, including integration of complete streets into Caltrans shop projects, especially in the San Lorenzo Valley and Watsonville areas where uh, the state highway acts as our main street. It allows for reducing speed limits and implementation of uh, multimodal projects such as bike, pedestrian, and transit projects that will help reduce vehicle miles traveled. And it'll do so in a way that directs funding towards these projects and provides opportunities. So the CalSTA has been meeting with a lot of the transportation groups statewide, um, one of which is uh, the, the Central Coast Coalition. And um, the Central Coast Coalition is one of our key um, uh, groups that we work with to promote the policies and goals of, of the Transportation Commission. And we were able to, at this meeting, present how our goals are very much aligned with those of the state. Uh, we emphasize the importance of taking a multimodal approach to transportation solutions. And I was given a, a considerable amount of time to speak and specifically called out several of RTC's multimodal projects, including our hybrid bus on shoulder ox lane project. And that's, that project has received considerable interest um, by several commissioners at other meetings that we've had with them about our plans, because they're looking for these sorts of projects to do this very thing. Um, included in those projects are our Highway 1 um, bike head overcrossings. Um, we, we're also looking to do complete streets on Soquel Drive the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail, and of course, our ongoing transit corridor alternatives analysis. Uh, I provided a, a summary of our meeting and presentation, um, which was included in a letter to Cal STA thanking them for this meeting. Um, so Cal STA is continuing to seek feedback into their plan to address the governor's executive order. The draft plan is expected to be released for public review this fall and finalized this spring 2021. And you can be assured that I'll continue to promote things that will increase funding for Santa Cruz County. And that concludes my director's report. Okay, uh, very encouraging. Is there anything that the commission can do? You're doing your part, of course. Is there anything formally that we could do uh, to uh, CalSTA to write them a letter, thank them for their, is there, what's your, rec is there any recommendation that we should uh, just encourage them to uh, keep moving forward? Um, we could certainly send a letter. Uh, we've, we've sent letters as part of the coalition, um, also um, uh, part of the self-help uh, uh, counties coalition as well. Um, but if, if you would like, um, we staff can work to draft a letter for the chair to approve. I think that'd be appropriate uh, since we're right in the mix right now. Um, I don't think it, uh, and, uh, Mr. Schiffrin, were you, um, did, were you trying to say something there? Yeah, I was. I just wanted to make a motion that we send a letter as you suggested. Okay. I'll second. And second by Bertrand. Um, the motion is second. Uh, call the roll, please. Commissioner Rockin. Aye. Commissioner uh, Alternate Lynn. Aye. Commissioner Martor. Aye. Commissioner McPherson. Aye. Commissioner Leopold. Aye. Commission Alternate Mulher. Aye. Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? You're on mute, Mr. Caput. Commission Alternate, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Bertrand? Aye. Commissioner Caput, you'll need to unmute.
Yes, well, let's go ahead and just have the unanimous vote. Uh, with, uh, Commissioner Caput not voting. Uh, we're uh, we will uh, let's pass unanimously. Uh, we'll move to item number 23. And while we deeply miss Miss uh, Eileen Mo, uh, we have a great fill in today, uh, Mr. Tim Govins, our District 5 Director, uh, to give us the Caltrans report. All right. Th thank you for that, Chair McPherson, uh, Commissioners. Um, uh, Tim Govins, Caltrans District 5 Director. Um, yes, we, as usual, you do have a Caltrans report in your uh, agenda packet, and I wasn't going to go over any specific <laughs> projects. Um, we, we have been very, very busy in the area as um, with our projects, as well as working closely with your staff on uh, Highway 1 as as has been noted, Highway 9, and some other joint partnership efforts we're doing. Um, you, Chair mentioned uh, Ms. Lowe, and I believe this board already knew that. Um, after 34 years with our department, um, Deputy District Director Eileen Lowe retired last week, so she's in, I've talked to her recently. Uh, she's enjoying what she calls her seventh Saturday in a row now. Um, <laughs> Just kind of uh, all, all her days are Saturdays. And it, I have been able to appoint a replacement already for her. Mr. Scott Eads is our new Deputy District Director of Planning, Local Assistance, and Sustainability. Scott is internal from within the district. Most recently, for the last four years, he was working down in Santa Barbara on the 101 corridor which has a lot of similarities to the Highway 1 corridor up here with um, highway components as well as local and other, other components uh, making up the corridor plan. And before that, he was doing project management, traffic operations as a transportation engineer, and he started his career with one of your sister agencies, um, Slowcock. He was a transportation planner with them back in the 90s. So I hope you'll uh, welcome Scott. He will likely be attending a lot of these meetings he is off this week on a pre-planned vacation, which we're all trying to do as we can in these uh, trying times. Um, Executive Director Preston had gone over some of the uh, agency action plans. Caltrans is very involved in those as well. We, we uh, joined, joined the Central Coast Coalition in meeting, meeting with uh, agency, showing how we're able to put some of those actions forward already, looking forward to doing more together in the future. And that is the sum of my update. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions if I could, or uh, that's it. Uh, no, I'm, uh, personally, I think we've all, what I'm, and all of us, each of us is uh, recognize a lot of overlay projects and uh, improvements that are going on on state highways in the region, so county. So we really do appreciate the efforts and uh, to see things getting done again, it's uh, because of the passage of SB1 and uh, our own uh, Measure D that a lot of these things are underway and getting done. It, it could be years away without those uh, two important measures. Uh, is there anybody else uh, that would like to make a, a comment, Mr. Govins? Caltrans operations at all? Uh, I'll make it uh, just a question. I can I go. Good. Uh, yeah, my monthly uh, question on uh, the crosswalk uh, when you can get an update uh, on Marchant Street and East Beach, which is part of Highway 152, uh, putting in a uh, crosswalk and uh, uh, pedestrian. Uh, activated uh, light. Okay. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head, Commissioner uh, Caput, so I will I will be uh, responding back. I will get back to you before the next meeting. That'll, that'll be fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank please have much. somebody give us an update on that during the report so Mr. Caput doesn't have to ask the question again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Anybody else would have a question for our district director? Okay. I have a question. Donna Lynn, Scott City, Scott Valley uh, for Metro, though. Yeah. Uh, we had several people on the um, uh, one of our intersections that Caltrans has put the yellow striping around the lights. 
and we had several calls to our city asking about that project and is it for i'm assuming it's for visibility but um, there was there were several people in the community asking about the background of the uh, outlining the lights okay um yes we we've we've done that as a safety measure on on certain in intersections and what what we discovered last year statewide um in in fire season, which as we all know is getting longer and longer, um, a lot of the utilities are having to do planned outages or we have emergency outages. And not everyone in the state knows how to handle um, traffic signals when they're out, you know, that it should be treated as a stop sign. And sometimes with all lights out, it has been very dark. So the yellow background is to highlight so that we have a reflectivity in the in the nighttime when all power is out for the whole area so that people actually realize they're coming up to an intersection. Thank you. I think it's a fantastic thing. Even in the daytime, you, you just notice the lights way more. And I assume there'd be a lot fewer people just running the light because they didn't know it was there. That is the hope. The problem is our young people, I think, hadn't experienced power outages. So talking to some of them, they said, well, there's no light. It's a free for all. So we have some education to do in that area. And, and I can say that is a statewide uh, commonality. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Oh, any other commissioner have a question of uh, the district director? Okay. Um, we will move on. Uh, we have a, an update on uh, Scotts Valley Projects, uh, Scotts Valley Public Works Department. I think uh, Daryl Jordan, the Public Works Director, is going to give us a report. Thank you, uh, Chair McPherson and Commissioners. I appreciate the time today. Uh, welcome to Scotts Valley. I wish we could be in person, of course, but uh, we need to do what we have to do. As you know, our community is led by our Mayor Randy Johnson, which is on the commission, and Miss Lynn, who's also there today, and our fabulous city manager, Tina Friend, which I think some of you are familiar with that family as well. Um, first of all, I'd like to just begin with some special thanks to a few members uh, we continually work with that have significantly contributed to our RTC project success. First, a person you know well is uh, Miss Rachel Marconi. She's been amazing with uh, her cooperation and coordination with our staff here, helping us keep projects um, online and, uh, and, and budgets. We appreciate her tremendously. Secondly, uh, Mr. Machado from the uh, County Public Works Department. His, him and his county staff have worked with us on multiple aspects of our projects to create better job specifications and designs. Um, we appreciate their communication on their projects adjacent to the city limits. As a matter of fact, on Scotts Valley Drive, uh, Chair McPherson, you're very well aware that there's some work going on right now. And so we're coordinating very closely with the county and uh, they've been fabulous to work with. So just some feedback for you guys on the other side. And finally, <clears throat> just some appreciation for uh, Guy Preston uh, to be added to our countywide team. It's been refreshing to have him with our team. He's been instrumental on uh, programming funds for all stakeholders around the whole county, including the cities and even the, the metro. So uh, just a shout out for uh, Mr. Preston. Thank you for your work. Um, and just a few projects we'd like to highlight today. Uh, Glenwood Drive Rehabilitation and the bike lanes is underway now. Should be finished hopefully uh, within the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> the project is a little less than one mile of new pavement, designated bike lanes and speed control. We've had a great response from the community, especially the cycling community on uh, the appreciation of the new surfacing and, uh, and the delinea delineations. Uh, matter of fact, the Santa Cruz County Cycling Club will be featuring a story about the project in their next edition. You'll be seeing that soon coming out. So again, this should be done in a few, few weeks. Uh, secondly, uh, our Glenwood Open Space Trails Project East. Um, we have a, a trails program on both sides of Glenwood, a, a west and an east project. The current east project is approximately five miles of new equestrian trails for uh, both horses and pedestrians, um, including some bridges to be constructed as well. This project complements our west trail system. On the west side, we accommodate cycling and animals. On the east side, we accommodate the uh, horses and pedestrians. So. Again, we get a lot of positive feedback from that project um, and it's going very well. We hope to have that completed with a, with a final um, bridge this fall. 
Uh, thirdly, uh, Measure D, street maintenance projects for the City of Scotts Valley. We had a project approved last night at City Council uh, with Mayor Johnson's direction. And um, they approved uh, 11 streets within the city to be resurfaced or rehabilitated. Um, staff's working with the county staff on this project. As a matter of fact, we expect almost the same treatment that the county's working on a similar project in town, which helped us streamline part of the process. Um, again, appreciation to them. That, that award was about $300,000 and we should be commencing that project in a couple weeks. Um, our current, just FYI, our current PCI uh, pavement, pavement index here is 66 in Scotts Valley. We're, we're really shooting to try to get to 70 as soon as we can with our SB1 funds and our Measure D funds. Um, I'd like to also just uh, give a quick update to our STPX funding. Uh, once again, uh, working with uh, the overall team, uh, uh, Mr. Preston was able to assist us in landing this program with a, a, a portioned approach. We're currently designing projects to complete sidewalk gaps and additional pavement projects throughout the city. One project in particular to highlight would be Blue Bonnet in our town. Um, Unfortunately, it has a discontinuous sidewalk on one side of the street. And during school, when we actually have kids in school, believe it or not, uh, the, high, the junior highs uh, students use this corridor to get to the library and to the park. So there's probably 50, 60 kids who use that on a daily basis when in session. And part of the road does not have sidewalk at this time. So these funds um, will be fortunate to use for uh, the completion of the sidewalk project and some other amenities along that corridor. Um, so those are just a few of the things that are going on in Scotts Valley right now. We're pretty excited about it. It's nice to see things happening um, with the low um, concentration of cars at the time. It's actually helping us get some uh, street projects done, believe it or not. Um, but in, in conclusion, our staff is uh, mitigating the COVID challenges as best as we can as possible. Of course, we have some technology issues I think everyone's dealing with. Um, but we hope to be pursuing a few new projects this year with an ATP plan that should be approved this um, fall. And with that, we'll be coordinating with the RTC staff to find additional funding to help us complete some of those projects. So thank you for your time, Chair, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Well, thank you, Mr. Jordan, and congratulations to Scotts Valley on a number of projects you've been doing. You're, you're completed or in the middle of, or they're just about to begin. And uh, I do wanna, as a member of Santa Cruz County on the Board of Supervisors, uh, thank our county uh, Public Works Department too for coordinated efforts with you. It's just a very efficient way to do it, and uh, it's going to just make for a better, uh, better opportunity for a lot of uh, well pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, whatever it may be. So uh, thank you, and uh, I think it's great that uh, that's a great example of a cooperative effort, really producing some really good results. Uh, is there any other? Can I say something? Yes. Uh, is it Mr. Johnson? Yeah, uh, thank well, you. Well, you know, yeah. uh, just like to echo what uh, Daryl has said, he does a great job. We have a very limited staff uh, uh, with respect to public works, two or three people. Um, and um, just also um, mention, of course, the collaboration that we have with the RTC and, and as he mentioned, the County of Santa Cruz uh, to kind of get the job done, which I think is appreciated both by county residents, but in particular, the citizens of Scotts Valley. So thank you. Um, and uh, well done, uh, Daryl. Thank you, Randy. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Chair, I'd just like to tag on that a little bit. There's sure. one more project too that and I believe this is all, I know it's, um, I believe it's also involving Major D and that's Glenwood. And that has been such a, a dangerous area for for uh, students and pedestrians and there's just been a lot of uh, really a lot of uh, praise for the work that's being done under difficult circumstances and uh, again with limited staff and that's right at the county line so um, I add my thanks and and uh, congratulations on this project moving forward for years it's been something that the community has hoped to see happen and it's only with RTC support that that happens. So thank you. Thank you. I just yeah. want to uh, thank the Scotts Valley Public Works Department for, and the others involved in this because I, I ride my bicycle a lot recreationally up into Scotts Valley and the improvements to the bicycle facilities are fantastic and I really do appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm speaking to a lot of other cyclists in the county. <laughs> Any other comments from commissioners? 
Okay, this does not uh, require action, but thank you for your report. I appreciate it very much. Um, that uh, completes our regular agenda. We're ready to move into closed session. Um, is there is there going to be anything reportable from our closed session? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we may have reportable action from item number 27 on the agenda. Um, the commission does have two real property negotiation closed sessions. Uh, one related to the acquisition of property and easements, that's item 27, and then one related to the negotiations related to the license agreement with uh, Progressive Rail, St. Paul and Pacific, that's item 26. Um, I would remind the commission that uh, the commissioners would have received, I believe, again this morning, the email from Ian Barry with the um, meeting information for the closed session. Okay. Can, can I ask on behalf, uh, um, I think Sally Arnold had asked us how will members of the public uh, know about getting uh, our report back out? Are we just going to leave open the, the link to this public meeting and when we're done, we'll come back and make an announcement? Uh, correct. I would recommend that we leave this one open while we go into closed session and then come back and report out. Thank you. Okay. Well, once, you're, once you're done with closed session, please do remember to come back through the regular Zoom meeting that... Um, from your links or the regular phone number for everyone. So that there's a there's a separate link for the closed session, correct? Correct. All right. Good. Um, okay. So um, we may have a reportable item uh, to close. We will not close the regular meeting. Uh, we will move into closed session. Uh, but I would like to announce in, in advance, uh, in case anybody leaves, that our next RTC meeting will be Thursday, September third, at nine o'clock, and I'm sure it's going to be by teleconference again. So that's Thursday, September 3rd, and the Transportation Policy Workshop meeting is scheduled for Thursday, September 17th at 9 a.m., also by teleconference. So we will uh, leave, or not close this meeting, but we'll leave this meeting going to closed session, and we may have a reportable item after our closed session. So thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll go into closed session. Sure. Yes. I don't believe since I came in as an alternate late, I don't see the link. So if someone can um, forward me the link for closed session, if. I will do that, uh, Ms. Lynn. Thank you. Also, can we have the um, screen, the share screen sharing ended so I can find my way back to my email? Um, I think you need to leave the meeting. Okay. Just end the meeting on your end. Okay, and then I'll come back to it right after we're done. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, we will uh, uh, go into closed session. Uh, see you there in, say, five minutes. It is uh, five minutes to 10. About now we'll reconvene in closed session at 10 o'clock. I think um, it's just you and I, uh, is that correct? Uh, we um, would like to have our commissioner McPherson. Can you give us a minute? Um, they're going to be back live. Uh, I, you were cutting out, but uh, okay. We uh, we have uh, we're reconvening after our closed session. I will ask our um, attorney uh, Stephen Mattis. Is there anything reportable from the closed session? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. You said we are live now. We are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, with regards to item agenda item twenty six, closed session, there is no reportable action. With regards to item 27, conference with real property negotiators, uh, the commission by an 11 0 vote um, authorized the executive director to make offers on the properties listed in item 27. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's the report on. Okay, thank you. Um, that is, uh, I don't think we need, there's nothing else on our agenda. So the, uh, the, the August 6th meeting of the uh, Regional Transportation Commission uh, will be formally adjourned at this point. Thank you and everyone have a nice day. Thank you.